Ma'am, please start. Good afternoon, everyone. So today we are here for our second lecture of the day. And uh, we are honored to have with us Dr. Devesh Thakur. Let me introduce our speaker of the day among our participants. Dr. Devesh Thakur holds MVSC and PhD from the prestigious ICR Indian Veterinary Research Institute with a career spanning over 18 years. His professional journey has been marked by various roles, starting as a veterinary officer in the HP State Department of Animal Husbandry and later transitioning into academia as a faculty member of SCOST Jammu. Since 2009, he has been a faculty member of DGC and Kovas. CSK HPKV Palampur. Dr. Devesh's job role has primarily focused on undergraduate courses in veterinary extension education. Beyond the classroom, he has take, undertaken the mental of principal investigator for seven action research projects funded by national and state agencies, including NIFTST India, NABARD, Himkoste, National Commission of Women, and ICRI ASRI New Delhi. His research endeavors have centered on enhancing livestock-based livelihoods through diverse initiatives such as capacity building activities, community fodder interventions, on-farm trials involving herbal extracts for common animal health ailments, and the establishment of micro-enterprises in dairy and poultry farming. His commitment extends to the grassroots level, where he has conducted numerous training programs, model training programs, and workshops. These initiatives funded by key entities like Agricultural Skill Council of India, National Commission of Women, Ministry of Agriculture, Government of India, NIFTM and ICR, and have targeted veterinarians, para-veterinary staff, extension officers and farmers, providing valuable insights into dairy, sheep and goat and poultry farming. His contributions to the field are evident in his publication record comprising over 62 research papers, 178 popular articles, and four books covering topics ranging from livestock entrepreneurship to dairy entrepreneurship, and the use of social media in agriculture and animal husbandry. He has designed a 10-hour long online course with an extensive 86 videos on communications and interpersonal skills. Notably, Dr. Thak Thakur's topic aligns seamlessly with the theme of World Veterinary Day 2023, on which he published an academic blog at Agricultural Extension in South Asia, Center for Research and Innovation and Science Policy. So today he will deliver a talk on the topic, Embracing Diversity, Equity and Inclusiveness in Veterinary Practice, Tailoring Care for All. I welcome Dr. Devesh Thakur to please, start, to please begin with his presentation. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ajayta, for a pretty long uh, introduction. And uh, good afternoon to all the uh, esteemed listeners and audience. So my topic is a little different, and it is evident from the title. And I'll straight away go to certain questions which I'll ask from you. And these are the questions like, what are the terms diversity equity inclusion what is this term or like individually if we go what do you mean by these terms then why this diversity equity inclusion which is known as dei these practices they matter to us and how they are being introduced into our profession so as i was thinking about this topic and i just inquired about how much uh, my colleagues who of course they are vets how much they know about this particular uh, topic so uh, someone said that diversity is about you know when the veterinarians they move into different kinds of jobs such as when they move to civil services or they move to uh, starting a startup that is what they said diversity is and uh, another interesting answer which i got was like someone said that it's about you know investing in diversity diversified equity in mutual funds so I received very uh, different kinds of answers and I realized that uh, as a veterinarian or those who are uh, uh, linked to the veterinary profession, we are not actually aware about these topics, these terms. So my lecture has two parts. The first part will be in journal about this concept. What is DEI and why this is important? And then we'll have one video on 
uh, unconscious biasness at workplace. The second part would be specific to our profession, uh, DEI in veterinary profession, how this trend is catching up, why it is important to us and what is being done, especially in the Western world to reduce DEI and what we can do. of this term in the Google. And we also see that all the top universities of the world, whether it's Yale School of Medicine or whether it's Harvard, whether it's Stanford Medicine, they have introduced this concept of diversity, inclusivity, and inclusion, as you can see, uh, see from their websites. Uh, our own innovative academic institutions, whether it's IIMs or IIT Delhi, they are also including this concept of diversity, equity, and inclusiveness in their campuses. They have started some of the programs also in this direction. We also have documents coming up, studies coming up on DEI in the higher education. Even the corporates, the business houses, they are talking about the DEI indices in their uh, offices, in their companies. Then the ASHA Cham, which is the, you can see the ASHA Chambers of Commerce and, Ind of, uh, Commerce and Industry of India. They are also talking about DEI. The sports bodies across the world, they are talking about diversity and inclusion. As you can see from the slides, sports Ireland is talking about. Then we have England Cricket Board, ECB, which is talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Our own BCCI have taken a step towards DEI by ensuring that there is a parity in terms of the match fees paid to men and women players. So when we see that, you know, DEI is now a word or a concept which has now global importance. So what exactly is DEI that we'll try to understand? So the first word, because this is this term has three words, diversity, equity, inclusion, and we'll talk about the diversity first. So when we say diversity, as per University of Edinburgh, it says diversity is when you recognize, respect, and celebrate each other's differences. So a diverse environment will be when we'll have people from different backgrounds and different mindsets. So it is about when you recognize the differences and also celebrate the differences that each individual is different from the other. That is what diversity means. And uh, just think about yourself. You as a personality can be, a, it can be like a soup. So just like a soup has different kinds of ingredients, especially if it is, you know, a combination if it includes various vegetables. Likewise, our personality will have different ingredients. Maybe that is that our personality is dependent upon our social status, our economic status, our gender, whether I am a male or female, my religion, language, my age, my whether I'm married or unmarried, my ethnicity, my sexual orientation, mental abilities, physical abilities. So all these factors, they make us, they form our personality and it, it is important that diversity means that we have to recognize that we are like different soups. 
each person is different each person is like a different kind of a soup and you have to appreciate it it's not like my soup is better than yours but just appreciating that we have different kinds of personalities so that is what diversity means recognizing respecting and celebrating each other's differences now i'll give you one more specific example of diversity so let us talk about the mental ability and mental ability specifically we'll talk about the thinking part now we can have people who can be a big picture thinker for example our own prime minister mr modi he is a big picture thinker he always thinks in a larger perspective likewise you'll find that some of your colleagues or maybe some of your your family members or friends they will be thinking in big picture terms they'll be they'll have grand plans on the other side we have certain people sometimes uh, uh, especially the females who are more detail oriented so what will happen in the meetings when there is a meeting the female co colleagues generally they'll ask more questions because they are more detailed so for example i'll give you an example uh, when we have a college function here so a female colleague will ask that where the bouquet will be kept who will be hand, uh, handing over the bouquet who will handle the stage who will bring the refreshments so all kinds of questions will be normally asked by females that means they are more detail thinker so the point i'm trying to make is that we have people who can see the big picture but then we have also uh, kind of people who are very detailed in their approach so the individuals they have different kinds of uh, thought process different kinds of looking into the things i'll give you another example also so as a learner auditory mode so they are a second kind of learner and then we have a kinesthetic type of learners so those learners are uh, those learners they cannot sit very long in a session or maybe there are certain students who cannot sit very long in a classroom they feel very itchy and they use more of gestures also while talking so they are kinesthetic learners so we have to understand that as a person we can learn or we can express in different ways we can be visual learners we can be auditory learners we can be kinesthetic learners so point is that uh, we all have different kinds of mental abilities different kinds of looking at the things and that is why it's important that we have to understand that each person is different and then we have to appreciate that diversity now this diversity if you have to understand in terms of workforce we have to see how diverse we have a workforce how many women are there how many men are there how many people of different age groups are there how many people of different backgrounds are there so that constitutes diversity and that is important in our workforce so some of the examples of diversity can be gender based diversity age based diversity ethnicity physical abilities and the neurodiversities means how differently one can think from others so that is what the diversity is uh as i was talking that diversity should not be in terms of only in terms of the racial and gender diversity but also how much differently we are able to think so this is also important let's come to the second part which is the equity part now equity part says that every individual who is in the workforce he should get a fair treatment if there are certain barriers which prevents someone to participate in the workforce or someone to 
perform his job effectively those barriers are to be removed that is what equity is so this also means having fair treatment for all the people so that the identity doesn't becomes a predictive of opportunities and equity and equality are you know very related terms so basically equality is when you are providing equal opportunities but you are not understanding the need of a particular individual or a group of individual so you can see in the slide equality means when you are offering similar way of moving across the room but not understanding the specific need of that individual but equity means when you provide support depending upon the specific need of a particular individual so for example we have uh, for uh, female you can say workers we have a maternity leave of 180 days but for male workers need equity because we have to understand that we humans have a lot of biases of which we are not aware and we'll understand those biases through a video but there are various biases and because of those biases uh, favoritism happens and some kinds of micro aggressions also happen in the workplaces which we are actually not aware and we'll understand in subsequent slide slides what those micro aggressions can be so as i was talking about micro aggression so microaggressions are basically very brief, subtle kind of exchanges, some kind of denigrating messages to individuals because of their group membership. So uh, these microaggressions happen to people of color, females, uh, or maybe in Indian context, it can be based on the region, on the basis of caste, on the basis of religion. So because of those factors, microaggressions happen. And uh, why do microaggressions happen? Because we humans, we have certain kinds of biases and prejudices to people who are different from us. So let's understand different kinds of microaggressions. So first is the micro assault. So micro assault happens, maybe a name calling happens. So maybe a student or maybe a colleague who is from the northeastern part of India. And if you call him as a Chinese, so that is an example of micro assault. So uh, this is one kind of micro aggressions which happen in workplaces, which happens in, uh, you can say, classes or everywhere in the society. So that is first kind of micro aggression. The second kind of micro aggression is the micro insult. So when uh, you communicate in a rude or in a very insensitive manner so when you uh, devalue or look down people from other cultures and you use those things in terms of uh, verbal and non-verbal communication then the micro insult can happen the third kind of microaggression is the micro invalidation so what happens when you just negate the other person's feelings or thoughts or ideas example is maybe a female colleague is giving her presentation and uh, someone in the audience is constantly interrupting while she's speaking or maybe uh, a boss uh, is giving a field activity to a female uh, subordinate and he's saying that uh, will you be, be able to go to site Kya aap se ho so this is an example of micro invalidation when you are negating the ability of other person negating the idea of other person so this is a micro invalidation a kind of micro aggression so uh, before we move ahead 
I have certain questions for you, which you can reflect. So suppose you are a team leader or you work in a team of maybe seven to eight people. So how often you compliment other people's and to whom in your team do you compliment the most? Do you give compliments to only specific group of people? Do you seek feedback from only certain kind of people neglecting the others? Do you talk about work of only few of the uh, colleagues and not including all of your colleagues? Do you share jokes only with few people in your team? So these are certain questions which you need to reflect upon because that may constitute that you have certain kind of unconscious bias in your workplace. Also, suppose you have a party or some kind of social gathering. Do you miss out one or two people in your team? Or how often you judge people based on their appearances, maybe because of their gender, their dressing style? Or do you genuinely respect differences? So these are certain reflections which we need to consider if we have to deal microaggressions in work. So what are the harmful effects of microaggressions? Well, there are various studies which say that if a workplace or an environment has microaggressions, so what will happen? The person who is facing such kind of aggressions will have reduced self-efficacy. He'll have you know, poor self-esteem. Maybe he will get, get into depression, anxiety, or maybe uh, substance use, alcohol, OCDs, or even suicides. So all kinds of mental health problems are related to microrigations. And this can affect our workplace productivity and also influence our mental well-being. Also, uh, because of the microrigations, what will happen? There are certain people who won't be applying for the jobs or they won't be striving for promotions. So overall, microaggression is not good for workplace productivity and also creates a lot of mental health issues. So then we come to the third part. First was the diversity. Second was the equity. Third is the inclusion part. Now, uh, while I was working as a veterinary officer, many times I felt that I didn't belong to that place. I didn't feel part of that system. So what about you? Have you ever felt that you did not belong to this particular office or you do not belong to this particular institution? So if this is happening, maybe your work environment, maybe your institution is not giving you a sense of inclusion. So inclusion means when you create an environment where everyone feels welcome and valued when everyone has access to resources and they has the ability to get involved in work groups they can influence the decisions when this happens we can say inclusion has happened so inclusion in in a workplace where inclusion happens there the differences are welcomed you listen to different perspectives and because of that we have a sense of belonging and inclusion has two parts. First is the sense of belonging. Second is when uniqueness, when you are able to speak about your opinions. So these are the values which we need in the organization to bring inclusion. So maybe we need humility. We need uh, attitude to accept the differences, to accept new ideas. Uh, we are more self-aware. We engaged in active listening, you know, speaking less, listening more, having an empathy, appropriate communications. So all those skills are required for inclusions in our organization. So I try to sum up the this concept of diversity could inclusion through a quote. So diversity is like when you have a seat at the table. You know, everyone gets a seat at the table. Equity is when you have a voice. And inclusion means when that voice is heard by the management. So that is what diversity, equity, and inclusion is. Now, I give 
another metaphor for this diversity equity inclusion so because these days you know the world cup is going on so i'll give you an example of a cricket so maybe we have a college cricket tournament or maybe a cricket tournament in your institution now diversity means when everyone every employee of that institution every person in the college or in the university is invited to be part of that cricket tournament equity means when everyone gets the opportunity to play or maybe experience the joy of playing and inclusion means when everyone feels comfortable everyone feels a part of the match so that is what diversity equity and inclusion so this is uh, in brief about the concept now why this diversity equity inclusion and belonging is important in our institutions so but before that again i have certain questions so how many of you believe that you are a rational person how many of you believe that you think rationally most of the time now if your answer is yes then i would say that you may be wrong because 2017 Nobel Prize winner Thaler, Richard Thaler has said that human beings are predictably irrational and illogical. So he has given or there are various kinds of biases and errors which are there in our thinking. Some of the examples have been listed. So one is the self-serving biases. So we humans have this self-serving biases. So this says that if something positive happens to us in our life then we owe it to our own qualities but if something negative happens to us we owe it to the external situations i'll give an example for that so for example if a student he gets 95 percent out of 100 i mean very good marks so he will give credit to himself that he has studied very hard he worked very hard because of that he got 95 percent he just denied the external situations maybe the paper was very easy maybe the maybe the teacher was liberal marking he would he would have a tendency to negate those external situations but to give credit to himself on the other hand if the students maybe he fails down in the exam he fails in the exam then he would say it happened because the paper was very tough it happened because the teacher was very strict in marking so this is what the self serving biases so humans they suffer from this self serving biases the second kind of biasness is the correspondence biases which says that when we try to uh, explain the personality of the person and if we see his specific behavior then he'll say that behavior is because of his personality not because of the situation that is the bias which we have i'll give an example for that maybe you are driving and there is a lot of rain uh, is going on and you're driving and suddenly someone uh, just uh, drives fast and he uh, takes over from your car so he you will say that this person is a very rash driver you won't understand the situation maybe that person was in a hurry because of the some emergency in the hospital so you ascribed that behavior of that other person because of the personality not because of the situation so that is what correspondence biases is all about so point is that we have a lot of biases and because of these biases we make a lot of errors in understanding in, uh, individuals or in making decisions and because of these biases we have to understand that dei practices are extremely important because DI practices they help us to improve our bias awareness they make us more aware about our own shortcomings in our personalities also it has been seen that when we have teams who are very diverse they make more innovative decisions so the innovative companies like google or apple or innovative institutions like the top universities of the world they go for diverse kinds of uh, workers or diverse students because they know that diversity brings innovations because diversity means diversity in terms of thinking so when the thinking is very diverse we'll have more creativity 
also when we have DEI, then we can say everyone feels safe in the office. Everyone feels safe in the workplace because when DEI practices are there, we can handle all kinds of microaggressions, all kinds of discriminations and biases. And that is why we need DEI. And when we have DEI, then we would have better employee engagement and we'll have higher productivities, higher results in our institutions. And that is why we need DEI. So we'll watch a small video uh, of uh, office space where you can understand how these kinds of biases happen in a workplace. And I'm very sure you can relate some of these biases in your uh, workspace. So I'll uh, go for a brief pause in my presentation and I'll show you a video and then we'll go to the second part of the presentation specifically to the DEI practices in our veterinary practice. So I'll be presenting, I'll be showing a video to you. Here is the video. So is, is the audio of the audio and the video uh, visible? Sir, video is visible, but audio is not clear. Sir, Mishra. Huh, audio is also clear, sir. Okay. Fine, fine. Everything fine, sir. Okay, fine. Shalini. Kavita. Mr. Venkat. No way. I was just being polite. I am not guilty. I felt bad. No, that was meant to be a joke. No, no, no. It was just a compliment. Hmm. Let's start from the beginning and see what happened. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Michelle. Second floor? Uh, no, fourth actually. Did you also get stuck in the path traffic? Uh, no, I live next street. I ride a scooter. Very convenient. By the way, you're looking very nice. Oh, thank you, sir. Acha cha, appraisal meeting. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll get it. You'll get it. Good morning, Shahi. What happened? I don't even ask here. Yeah. You know that Mishra ji, he thought I'm dressed like this just to impress the boss. Can you believe that? Many. Mm -hmm. Listen, it's a boss in. I need to ask for leave next evening. Leave? In the middle of the places? Wait, what's your excuse? Are you pregnant? Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. You can use your madrasi bonding and ask him. Of course, he'll give you leave. Go, go, go. Go ask him. <laughs> okay. I see. Not for it. Mm. Oh, hello. Ah, ah, Shama, you should have been in the show yesterday. You missed an amazing show, yeah. It was so good. Hey, Ashwin, how was the show yesterday? See, it was a brilliant show. Right? Hello, young achiever of the year. <laughs> Morning, sir. Morning. What's up? Coffee? Break already, yeah. <laughs> Evening, 7 p.m. Concord. Sure, sir. I log in from home. No. Office. Sure, sir. Eat, bake, coffee, bake, things. I don't know what colors you got. I got to work. Mr. Ji? Sir. Bite here, bite here. You don't have to. 
Uh, by the way, the project that was in the pipeline, we got it. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you, sir. In fact, I was talking to Pooja about how the clients loved your presentation and he's very happy with it. We'll be going forward. But Chota's a problem here. The client wants to run the production in two locations simultaneously. No problem. Which will involve a lot of traveling. Sir, I, can. I know, I know. Which is exactly why I asked Pooja to take the lead so you can relax. Hmm. So now what do you say? Are I was just showing empathy, considering he's disabled. Uh, you mean differently? Yeah, yeah, that's what. But boss here was mean to me. It's not as if you are perfect, Akshay. You judged me because of my disability. Excuse me? Look who's talking. You judge me just because of the dress I'm wearing. Women don't dress just to impress people, by the way. By the way, you keep saying I get perks because I'm from Madras. That's also not cool. No, but that's a joke. Oh, oh I you mean, that is so so But you that's know I'm not meaning it as a joke. No, no I don't. Seriously, you keep saying it every time. One or two times. Stop. 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 It's all of you. You're all guilty of unconscious bias. What bias? Unconscious bias. Judging people based on stereotypes which you are not even aware of. Like assuming that Shalini was well dressed only for a better appraisal. Now that's a bias, Mr. Mishra. By the way, you're looking very nice today. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. You should have been more self aware. And you thinking that Kavita uses her regional connect to pull favors. No, that was meant to be a joke. You could have showed more empathy. In the middle of appraisals. <laughs> Wait, what's your excuse? Are you pregnant? <laughs> hey. And Akshay, you could have asked for a second opinion. But Chota's a problem here. The client wants to run the production in two locations simultaneously, which will involve. Will that be an issue? <laughs> no problem, sir. I can shuttle between the two locations. Thank you for asking. All right, then. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I got it. I, I got it. I'm guilty of unconscious bias. I assume young people take a lot of breaks and don't take work seriously. Uh, guys, uh, can we go for a coffee break? <laughs> so this was a small uh, video to explain the concept of unconscious biasness and we'll move further towards the second part of the presentation. So is the PPT uh, visible? Yes, sir. OK. So I'll go to the second part. Right. So let's come to specifically to the DEI in the veterinary profession. So again, uh, when we talk about DEI, even the vet schools and vet institutions, especially in the Western world, in the US or European nations, they are embracing DEI practices. And why do we need DEI in veterinary profession? And primarily, there are three reasons. One is we, the veterinarians, we also are humans. We have a lot of errors, a lot of biases. And because of those biases, we can make errors in our decision making. Second is uh, maybe because of the owner's background, we can have disparities in animal care, which we'll understand in subsequent slides. And also a lot of job stresses happen in the workplace in veterinary profession also. And because of these three reasons, we need DEI practices. So let's understand each of these uh, factors. So first is the errors in decision making. So uh, the veterinary profession is one of the least diverse profession in the US. Mostly we have the white uh, persons who are in the veterinary profession. So it's the least diverse profession. And because of that, we are talking about DEI there. 
also we are humans we have implicit biases we are many we have many biases of which we are not aware we have a lot of cultural incompetence especially when we are going to deal with the farmers and that can affect our decisions that can create disparities in animal care because why we have our client from different socioeconomic background maybe we have uh, ladies women from uh, urban background from a uh, high income society but then we have uh, poor farmers we have shepherds we have different kinds of clients and when we, our clients are different especially when we have low income clients they can face barriers they can face barriers in seeking right kind of advice in seeking right kind of treatment so i'll give an example for that so here in our college we have a very good facility very good clinical facility one of the best clinical facilities i would say and i have no problem that we have a very good clinical facilities but point is that you know majority of the cases which are coming to our uh, clinics are largely the small animal the clients are maybe from the middle income or maybe from the rich in uh, background but when it comes to poor farmers women farmers maybe less than 10% of the opd is coming from those farmers and that may also be happening in various veterinary colleges or maybe to some extent in some of the hospitals some of the veterinary hospitals which are in the urban centers so point is that the low income clients they are facing barriers in getting advisory services from vets maybe because of poor communication maybe because of lack of uh, empathy or maybe cultural incompetence now point is when our clientele is so diverse we have people from urban background we have people from high income uh, section but we have also farmers clientele from who are poor maybe women maybe from uh, disadvantaged societies so the clientele is diverse our professionals need to be diverse we need manpower who are from diverse sections of the society that is why we need dei what will happen when we'll have diversity in terms of our workforce we can improve our access to veterinary care to every section of the society we can reach out to the unserved societies which is right now may not be happening so that is why we need dei also having a dei approach means whenever you are dealing with the clientele you have to understand each of your clientele is very different so in particular slide you can see that maybe a woman uh, veterinary veterinarian is discussing something with the farmers now she has to keep different kinds of audiences in mind maybe here is a youth here we have a middle aged person with good physical abilities here we have a older woman older women older men maybe a sh shy lady maybe a person who cannot buy medicines because of the weak financial resources so what you have to think you have to see that each clientele each farmer is having a different kind of mindset or maybe different kinds of resources so that is what we need to have a dei approach in our veterinary practices now i'll give a specific example for that so uh, it was last year uh, we are having a project in some of the villages of this part of the world and uh, we received a call from one of the project site and they said that that village had encountered an fmd outbreak and when we went there we saw that whole of the village was ravaged by fmd the uh, the animals were severely affected in terms of productivity but to our utter dismay we found that even after one month that outbreak was not attended by the veterinarian or the para veterinary staff of that region there was no communication was made by the veterinarian 
to handle the outbreaks or to treat the cases. Now, clearly, my maybe a brother or sister who was a veterinarian over there, he failed to realize the equity and inclusiveness component in veterinary practices. So that 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 thing shouldn't happen. So that 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 is why we need DEI. Now the third part is, as a veterinarian, we are also facing a lot of mental stress. Now there are various studies, especially in the developed world, which suggest that veterinarians have serious kinds of job stresses. This may also be happening in our country, where discriminations happen, where discrimination uh, among women veterinarians may be happening, maybe among the students because of the various reasons and because of that job stress may be happening and when job stress happens that is why we need DEI practices which can reduce the some of the mental stress factors encountered by veterinarians. So some of the common uh, reasons of mental stress can be maybe when you have client sexism, maybe clients, they are demanding a male veterinarian instead of a female veterinarian. We do not have en enough females who are reaching to the topmost veterinary hierarchy. So this slide talks about the summary, why we need DEI in veterinary professions, because this will help to overcome the biasness in decision making. This will reduce the disparities in animal care because the low income clientele they have higher barriers in terms of assessing competent veterinary care and it can also reduce the job stress among the veterinarians now what measures we can take for supporting dei in veterinary profession so first is building a pipeline for diversity so we can have pipeline programs or we can have volunteering opportunities for underrepresented groups to pursue veterinary careers. So some of the foreign universities, what they do, they offer short duration residential programs where high school students, they get an opportunity to learn from the veterinary students that what happens in a veterinary college or what is the veterinary degrees all about. So uh, they, they those students who have genuine interest in this profession, they can join it as well as we can have students from diverse kind of backgrounds as a veterinarian also what we can do we can offer volunteering opportunities for some of the uh, high school 10 plus 2 students who can learn more about this profession so that will also help them to join this profession especially from the disadvantageous section of the society so as you can see, the some of the universities, they offer various certificate programs on DEI practices and they also welcome faculty from diverse backgrounds. So if an Indian is getting appointed, you can see uh, this university is celebrating the appointment of a person from India. So we need diversity in terms of recruitment of faculty also. Now, second way through which we can create DEI is creating an inclusive campus environments where, where we can have affinity groups or where we can address microaggressions. Now, affinity groups, we can have certain associations of uh, people so that they feel a sense of belonging. Also, we can create safe spaces for diverse opinions and beliefs. Another way is to redesign our course curriculum for DEI practices where we can have topics such as implicit biases or various kinds of unconscious biases which we have or about the cultural competency. So these topics are being introduced in the DVM curricula. We can also think about redesigning curricula for uh, our students through VCI to promote DEI practices. then also uh, we need to give more opportunities for our students to apply their learning in diverse environments so 
I'll use this particular quote from a movie which is very famous, Tare Zameen Par, which says that जो दिखता है हमको लगता है है जो नहीं दिखता है हमको लगता है नहीं है लेकिन कभी कभी जो दिखता है वो नहीं होता और जो नहीं दिखता वो होता है सो आई गिव यू माई ओन पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस सो वेन आई वॉज स्टडिंग इन वेटनरी कॉलेज एंड आई यूज टू सी वेरी गुड इन ऑपरेशन थिएटर्स और वेरी गुड फैसिलिटीज इन आर कॉलेज सो आई यूज टू थिंक दैट यू नो दिस विल बी दिचुएशन वेन आई वर्क एंड I I I am very sure that most of you will relate to this thing that you will be thinking in similar ways that you know when you go to serve in the field the situation may be like that you'll have a very good hospital with very good facilities but the field situations are very different field situations are very different so when the situations are like this they are not like this but they are like this then what you have to do we have to create opportunities for students to learn in diverse environments maybe right now what is happening most of the student teaching most of the student learning is happening in the campuses except from the saturday ambulatory clinics they do not have much opportunities to work with low income individuals to work in low resource environments and because of that what is happening the social awareness and the cultural competencies of the veterinary graduates is quite less so we need to provide opportunities for students so that they can apply their learning in diverse environments this is also one way we can promote dei practice in our campuses now some of the examples which i'll give you from this part of the world where the veterinarians they are using dei practices in himachal pradesh so you can see that uh, we have a place bead bead is very close to palampur and there a lot of tibetan refugees they also live but some of the veterinarians they provide best quality treatment to do, to the pets of those tibetan refugees likewise we have many veterinarians who are ser serving diverse kinds of uh, clientele maybe uh, old age women maybe uh, shepherds so they are doing very good uh, you can say uh, uh, they are already adopting the dei practices in their veterinary practice so that they can serve a diverse population what are the other measures which we can think about to promote di practices well the faculty as a faculty member we should respect the student diversity we should not be engaged in any kind of name calling or hurtful remarks we can have dei committees in our colleges in our campuses uh, where uh, we can think about measures to promote dei in the campuses we can also think about starting some kind of training programs or certificate programs to promote dei or having knowledge of various kinds of cultures now this is this is the mini summary uh, now the american veterinary medical profession what they have done they have moved quite ahead and they have created a commission for dei practices they have a podcast on dei they have started scholarships for students who uh, demonstrate financial need and they have also created some kinds of awards to promote dei practices in the veterinary programs likewise the rcvs they have also initiated various initiatives on dei so what we need to do for our dei maybe we can think about training uh, the veterinarians about this particular uh, arena we can think about creating support networks for the underrepresented individuals in this profession we can even think about reviewing our hiring practices where we have faculty or maybe have people appointed from diverse kind of backgrounds to promote dei also we need to be more aware about our own biases to work upon our own cultural competence so dei practices require awareness engaging stakeholders and bringing a change in the policy these are some of the uh, awareness materials on microaggressions which have been developed by british veterinary association we can also think about developing such kind of materials in indian context uh, they are also creating various kinds of webinars we can also think in similar directions the american association of veterinary medical colleges they have created a dictionary or you can say a monograph on the glossary of dei uh words and practices 
in terms of veterinary practices what we need to do we need to treat every client as they request to be treated maybe we can celebrate their achievements we have to communicate in their language and acknowledge their culture so i'm coming to the conclusion part so right now what is happening we are very less aware about dei and we have maybe we are aware but then we, we may have very little acceptance to these measures which can hamper the growth and modernization of our profession so we need a more open and accepting profession where uh, di practices are celebrated where animals are not neglected on the basis of owners background where we have belonging in the workplace we have belonging with our clientele and we go for improved patient care we have to understand that dei is a shared responsibility for each one of us because that would lead to improved animal care and that would create an exciting future for the veterinary profession so my final slide says that embrace the spectrum let differences ignite in unity we thrive in diversity we take flight for a profession to truly excel and exceed di is the key it's the ally we need thank you thank you so much sir thank you sir for this uh, excellent presentation on this wonderful topic now i invite the participants to please clear their doubts if they have any yeah they can type you know, in the chat box or they can ask directly to the sir Dear participants, if you have any doubts or queries, you may ask directly to the sir or you may type in the chat box. <laughs> 